Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Lead Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. In one of my recent live streams, I asked you guys for a lot of suggestions for interesting places in the Colonia area that I could go and visit since I've decided to take another small exploration trip out from Colonia just to get some, uh, some distance behind me and go out and explore a bit because I actually miss it a bit. And one of you guys suggested a system, I can't remember who unfortunately, but I just labeled it Black Hole and Neutron Star. So that's bound to be interesting and it's the next system coming up here. So uh, let's jump in and let's have a look at it. Oh, look at that like purple spot up, up ahead. Oh, break, 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 break. And, oh, there we go. Oh, you can see like a tiny, tiny black hole there in the middle. That's not very big. Now, where's the neutron star? Probably down here, maybe? Is that it? Hold on, let's fire off the discovery scanner and let's see what we can find here. Okay, so yes, in fact, there is a black hole as the main star and a neutron star as the secondary. Yeah, it's all the way out there at almost 50,000 light seconds. That's quite far away. I think before we go there, let's just go and let's take a look at uh, at the local black hole. I just love the black hole effect. Let's see how close we can get. Oh, I have actually tried before to see what happens if you try to fly into a black hole. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but let's give it a go. Let's see how close we can get. Oh, this looks weird. <laughs> well, here we are, dropping out at just 50 kilometers off the off the black hole itself. But you can see here that even though I'm boosting towards it, I'm not getting any closure um, because essentially we've hit the uh, like the, the hard exclusion zone of the black hole, and, and this is just a mechanic in the game that prevents you from flying directly into it. Now, to be fair, if we were this close to a black hole of this magnitude, we probably wouldn't be sitting here right now but i like that donut disc that you get of uh, of stars around it well, i wonder what happens if you try to fsd jump into it maybe it will just it should drop us out immediately as we hit the exclusion zone but maybe it's gonna jump us a little bit closer forward ah, okay it doesn't i was hoping that we would be able to do like a small jump forward and actually get inside the exclusion zone but it didn't allow us for that. That we could actually just do FSD jumps to get closer and closer and closer to it. But uh, that doesn't work. So it seems like it is really a hard cap and you can't really get any closer. Now let's go out and have a look at the uh, at the neutron star system. This is quite interesting that it's that far away. Because originally when I read the, uh, the title of the system here, I was half expecting that what we would be looking at was a black hole with a neutron star orbiting really, really close. And I was, I kind of prepared myself to sit and I would probably mention something about type 1a supernovas and, and how they are formed with, uh, with stars. But with this kind of distance, um, I mean, how much is that? Like 50, 50,000 light seconds? Hold on. Yeah, so 50,000 light seconds. This is just about 100 astronomical units AU being the 100 times the distance from the sun to the earth. Just to kind of get a, a reference of, of how big this is. Um, I guess if that star, how heavy is that black hole? See. What I'm thinking here is normally when you see when I see these two tiny objects in a system, my initial thoughts is well, what most likely has happened here uh, some time ago. Let me see how heavy this is. Uh, solar eleven solar masses. Okay, so it's not the biggest, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely up there. Let's just get our good old trusty. HR diagram out so we can have a look at that. Ah yeah, here we have it. Okay, so if you haven't seen this one before, this is an HR diagram and it's something you use in astronomy to try and try and classify stars based on um, based on their physical properties. And we can see in this case, um, obviously the, the, the star has like 11 solar masses, so we can see up the, the scale here, we have the sun down here at obviously one solar mass, and as we move up, 11 solar masses, we are up in the like, very blue stars. Um, we're not moving out to necessarily supergiants, but it's very blue stars. That is what you would expect, right? Because in order to form a black hole, you need to have a very, very heavy star to begin with. We also see the lifespan of these kind of stars is also very, very low. At just, what is that, 10 million years. So they don't really live that long. Same thing with, uh, with white dwarfs, neutron stars. Often they, they are remnants of... Um, 
of very, very large stars. So what I would expect to have happened in a system like this, and it might very well be what has actually happened, is once there were a binary system of two very, very large blue stars that were orbiting very close, or not necessarily often. If you have two stars, let's say one is very heavy, and one is smaller and, and, and lighter, and they orbit each, each other very closely, the heavy star will slowly begin to pull mass off the lighter star, because it's just heavier, so it's, it's pulling, it's stripping off the upper layers of the smaller star, slowly eating it up. As the bigger star does that, its mass begins to increase, and especially the core of the star's mass begins to increase, causing it to eventually begin to collapse in on itself. And that, at a very specific mass, that causes a supernova. That type of supernova is called a class 1a supernova, because it doesn't matter what the initial mass of either the stars are, when one of the stars reach a very specific mass, it's gonna go nova. And that means that the light emitted spectrum, the light intensity, is pretty much always identical for all class 1a supernova. And therefore we use them as what we call standard candles, because then we know exactly, if we spot a class 1a supernova, we know that supernova had exactly these physical properties in terms of brightness, um, and how much light was uh, was emitted from it. And then we can see how bright we see it, and then we can kind of use that to, to estimate the distance to, uh, to very distant objects. So even though these events are rare, these are definitely events that, uh, that astronomers they pay close attention to. I'm not really sure if that's what's going to happen in this system here, because the fact that we have a black hole indicates that we had a very big star at some point, or at least it swallowed up enough mass to become so big. But again, the distance is quite... Uh, quite large and not sure if you would have enough mass transfer at these kind of distances for like uh, for this to happen of these kind of stars so, so i guess the beginning part is figure out to what's look. going on here what's going on in this system and uh, we can actually start by having a look at the age of the stars that's a good place to start um this one is dated i just even have an age yeah, here we go um what is that that's like eleven thousand million years so what that's a lot okay um, and this one. Okay, so they have the same age. That indicates that they were in fact formed um, as part of the system. One of my theories here was that maybe this was a very unlikely thing where a system now with a black hole has been captured, or well, the, probably the neutron star would have been captured into a system containing a black hole. It would be highly unlikely, but it could technically have happened. Um, but if we look at the... Hold on, this is interesting. Look at the orbital paths. Ah, yeah, look at that. You can see that the orbit plane of the planets around either star align up with each other. If these were two separate systems captured around each other, you would expect to see one of these planes being off skew compared to the orbit plane the two stars had around. But because everything is nicely aligned on a plane, as you can see here, this indicates that this system was in fact formed this way and it is not something that's been, been captured. What I think would have happened in a system like this is we would have had a very, very heavy star. Uh, it would probably have been slightly more than the 11 solar masses that we have right now back in uh, on the black hole. But it would have been very heavy. Obviously, it had a lot, short time span. You would have a smaller star, which would most likely also have been quite heavy. I mean, if we take a look at the mass of that star, 1.8. Uh, but again, remember, this is only the core. So we have stripped up. So they would have been a little heavier when they were, uh, when they were formed. But you would have a very heavy star in the middle. You had a lighter star orbiting out uh, further out with planets. We see that all the time, also in Elite. And what I think happened here is that uh, one of the that the main star would have died first because it's heavy, and it would have gone supernova. And having a supernova go off inside your solar system is no small event. If that happened in our solar system, we would be done for. I think maybe that shockwave from the supernova could have triggered the second star to get its outer layers stripped off um, or maybe even uh, cause a core collapse, basically causing maybe a secondary explosion. That could potentially have happened, um, leaving, a, um, uh, leaving a neutron star because the second star wasn't heavy enough to perform uh, to, to collapse down to a black hole, so it would only collapse down to, uh, to a neutron star. And um, I think it would be something along those lines that uh, that would happen. Here we come. We're now coming up to uh, 
to neutron star quite a beautiful little thing unfortunately we can't really get a good shot of both objects here close to each other because obviously they're so far apart that we won't be able to see the black hole all the way out here and the gravitational lensing effect is going to be so small that i don't think we're going to be able to uh, um to observe it maybe if we do a zoom we're going to try that in a bit here but we can actually see it you can actually see it here obviously the neutron star here in the foreground but to the left hand side of the screen we can actually see the slight lensing effect of uh, of the black hole and you can also now see as we have the neutron star moving across the field here that there is also a very very small lensing effect on uh, on the neutron star as well it's by no means as, as prominent as our black holes obviously but it's definitely there okay so i've been sitting and looking at the stats of the different planets a little bit more try to figure out what like What's happened in this system? Because it's quite interesting. I notice, of course, this debris field. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that's the, the inner planets that were once there. Um, <laughs> but you can see all the, the stars. And also this one is like 3,000 light seconds out. This planet was also like 3,000 light seconds out, which is about six astronomical units, indicating that everything closer were probably stripped out uh, during, the, uh, during the explosion. Like, Mars is about one and a half AU out from... Um, uh, from the sun and Jupiter is I think is around 11 astronomical units so this one being what's that around six I think this is about halfway the distance from uh, from Jupiter and out but if we just quickly take a look at the HR diagram again and we take a look at a star that is let's say it's slightly heavier than the 11 solar masses it should have a lifespan of around 10 million years as we saw before looking at this black hole however we can see that it is significantly older so the fact that this is so old indicates that that these planets will probably have reformed after the supernova explosion. You see, one of the things that puzzled me was the fact that there were still gas giants here. Because if I if I see the supernova, I would expect these to have been stripped away and not really be around anymore. But yet they are in this system, and that puzzled me a little bit. Um, but of course, it makes sense if this happened so long ago that these planets would essentially have reformed. I think that's going to be it for this system. It was an interesting stop and I'm going to continue out. I have multiple more stops that I want to do. So if you want to join this little journey out into the black, looking at some interesting systems and talking about some space and astronomy along the way, then go down and hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you liked it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.